So good morning, everyone. Uh, so nice to see you here. Today is January 16th, 2019, and this is the teaching and learning call. Uh, today we are going to have Wilma Hodges from Longsite updating us on the feedback she's received in various sessions on the proposed Lessons 2.0 project. Uh, but before we begin, I wanted to invite any announcements from folks on the call. So if there are any, please come on the mic or type something in the chat. And I'll repeat it for the recording. Um, just a couple of announcements. Uh, Sakai Camp is coming up um, soon for those of you guys who will be there. I'll be seeing you in person in about a week and a half. So that should be a lot of fun. We've got a lot of great uh, topics to discuss. Um, for those of you who can't be there in person, we are going to have two opportunities for you guys to join us remotely. There's a little bit of time set aside on Monday afternoon between 3.30 and 5 p.m. Eastern, and then also Tuesday morning between 10.45 and 12 noon, uh, where we're going to actually have a Zoom uh, session running and you should be able to connect remotely to kind of sit in and even participate in some of the Sakai camp discussions. So we're going to be trying that out this year, see how it goes. Um, so you have a couple of, of opportunities to to sit in and um, get a little taste of, of Sakai camp um, if you can't make it there in person. So um, so that's coming up the end of this month. Um, that's Monday, uh, January 28th and Tuesday, January 29th. Those um, two opportunities there. Um, also, right now, the Open Imperio call for presentations or call for proposals is open. And the deadline is the 25th. And that's coming up really fast. That's in like 10 days. So if you're thinking about um, something that you might want to present in LA this summer. That's where the conference is going to be. It's going to be at the Omni Hotel in Los Angeles. Um, so for those of you who haven't been to the West Coast in a while, this might be an opportunity to go uh, visit sunny California, although I'm, I'm told it tends to be foggy in June. So um, there's that. But anyway, um, so hopefully you guys will be submitting proposals. I know all of you have great work that you're doing on campus, and I'm sure you can come up with lots and lots of great proposal ideas, birds of a feather. Um, you know, it's a great opportunity to network with your peers in the community and share what you're doing. So hopefully I'll see lots of submissions from you guys soon. Thank you, Wilma. Yes, hopefully we'll get some great presentation submissions. I know. Well, I know. I'm sorry, this is Adam Hauerwas at PC. Wilma, just out of curiosity, do you know when conference registration will open for Open Aperio? For Open Aperio, I'm not sure exactly. Um, it should be fairly soon. I know we try to open it up um, as early as we can, but they're still getting the, the conference um, registration site uh, configured and everything. So I don't have an exact date yet, but I'll be sure to let you guys know as soon as I hear. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Wilma. Anybody else have questions for Wilma? about those announcements, or are there any other announcements? All righty, then we will go ahead. And Wilma, I need to give you presenter privileges. Give me a second, and I will do that. OK. Or try to. OK, there you go. All right, so give me just a second to get the lovely screen share going. <laughs> so I'm curious, how many folks on the call, I, I'm not sure, uh, are planning to come to, uh, sorry, to Sakai Camp? Maybe just uh, something in the chat. To... So Lee is going to be there. Great.
Okay, you guys should be seeing Josh will be my... there. Adrian. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Um, uh, yeah. There, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Let me, oh, I don't remember if I shared this out. So let me do that real quick. Anyone with the link can do. Okay, so I'm going to paste this link into the chat here. This is uh, version two of our concept document. For those of you who um, attended one of the sessions, we went to a lot of different groups. We came on the TNL call. We went to um, several of the working group meetings like UX and accessibility and core team and um, made the rounds, basically. <laughs> um, uh -huh. We also did a, a presentation at Sakai uh, virtual conference and that sort of thing. So you probably, chances are, have, have sat in on at least one of those sessions, and in which case you probably saw the first version of this concept document. Um, this uh, version two of the document is it's based on the the, the first um, ones. You won't see radical changes, but uh, but we have made some revisions here as a result of the feedback that we gathered. So um, so what I'd like to do today is just kind of recap some of that for you um, and uh, and give people an opportunity to comment or ask questions. So um, so basically the first part is pretty similar. If you've seen this before, it just talks about our idea for the redesign of lessons. I'm not going to go over that again. I'm assuming everybody on the call is, is familiar. If you're not, feel free to read through the, the document at your leisure. Um, so all of this is basically the same. The, the big change here is, is down here at the bottom. Um, based on a lot of the feedback that we got, um, we, we're thinking now that it's probably going to make more sense to break up the development into kind of two distinct phases. And the first phase would actually be a lot of the back end stuff. So uh, working on reusable web components to include the CK editor upgrade, which is a big thing in and of itself. Um, but these would be targeted for Sakai 20. Um, so we hope to get a lot of these components in, um, but we wouldn't actually tackle the, the main lessons UI until you know we would expect that that would inc be included in, in Sakai 21. So basically we would build a library of components that lessons would be um, intended to use and then once all the components are there then we can kind of plug them into the new UI that gives us more time to really fine-tune the user interface make sure it's it's as elegant and, and user friendly as we want it to be um, not kind of rush that piece of it and um, and have that that library of reusable stuff already there and ready to go um, to plug into that new user interface so it would delay the UI a little bit, but we would already see um, a lot of improvements in functionality in Sakai 20 um, because of things like the CK Editor upgrade and maybe some other components that could be plugged in to even the current lesson tool or other tools in Sakai, uh, depending on the, the type of component we're talking about, because they, they would vary. Um, but uh, CK Editor obviously is ubiquitous. It's available throughout Sakai, so that would definitely be something that would um, impact a lot of tools in addition to lessons. So, um, so that's kind of the biggest change. Um, and let me, this, all this stuff, I pretty much left just as we had it before. We're still looking to fix the same kinds of problems. We're still looking to make it sort of a lightweight site builder eventually, just not as quickly as we hoped initially. Um, we still hope to do the whole templating idea, maintain existing functionality, all that stuff, addressing the technical debt. Everything's still on the table. It's just we've kind of split it up and we're going to tackle um, the back end work at first. Um, so as I scroll down here to the stakeholder section, this is where I plugged in um, some of the key findings from the feedback sessions that we conducted. So um, so that was a really important part of our process is to kind of you know vet the idea with the community, see what people think, see what's important to folks, um, to make sure that that this is something that is going to get, you know, 
um, widespread buy-in that people really want to see happen. Um, and there did seem to be a lot of community support for an improved authoring experience and for the idea of templating and being able to kind of reuse templates and, and make it um, an easier uh, onboarding experience for new users because they can pick from sort of preconceived templates to help them design effective pages and that sort of thing. So there was a lot of support for those ideas. Um, and so that was good to, to have that validation. Um, Another key finding that we um, surfaced during these feedback sessions was accessibility. Obviously, that's important to us um, and it's important to the community. And so that's something that really needs to be baked in from the beginning. So that is going to be something that we're going to be very conscious of at every step of the process is to make sure that we design with an eye toward accessibility. Um, and that means not only, um, you know, building in alternatives, um, but making sure that we don't introduce you know new issues um, so so that's definitely going to be forefront as we um, work through this project another key finding was that um, the UI development is a priority. We do want that to tie in with a lot of the other um, community efforts like the Switch project and the pattern library that Duke has been working on and so we want to make sure that it harmonizes well with other uh, user interface efforts that are currently happening. Um, but we also want to make sure that um, when we redesign the tool that it really is an improvement. It's not just different, it's better. So, um, so part of that may be actually employing an outside resource that has um, some really dedicated expertise in user interface development to optimize that design. So we haven't quite figured out how that's going to work um, or who that's going to be, but, uh, but we want to bring in some sort of, of consulting resource to help us um, make it as, you know, as exciting as, as it can be. Um, so that's definitely um, been added kind of to the, the workings of the plan. Um, the, um, the decision of whether or not to maintain the two tools side by side or to have everybody shift to the new lessons all at once, that's still an open question. And, and part of what we got out of the discussion sessions is, especially with some of our technical folks, is that's largely determined by the technical implementation. So it's not a decision we have to make immediately. It will sort of evolve as as we develop the different pieces, and um, you know it'll also depend on you know the the amount of existing functionality that's available. I mean, it, it might not be a one to one ratio of of every single item, but as long as there's enough of the current functionality and maybe better ways to do things that are, can be done currently, um, you know, that might also make the determination of whether it's a single tool or a side-by-side -side and you upgrade whenever you feel like it. So um, that decision is yet to happen. We don't have to, to choose a road on that uh, path quite yet. So, um, so that can be uh, delayed a little bit uh, further in the prog process of the, the overall project. Um, the new lessons tool, this was another piece that, that was important to a lot of folks. It should have really su a robust support for import and export of content. So we want to make sure that we uh, build in uh, ways to get content in and out in a more elegant fashion. So things like um, IMS Common Cartridge or even just a Sakai export from one course to another if there are any other standard formats that we might want to write to. Um, those all need to be kind of considered as we're uh, redesigning that, um, that UI piece of it. And then um, Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, the development of reusable web components, including but not limited to the CK Editor upgrade, all of that can be done in advance of the UI work. And that was really kind of an important thing because it, it breaks up the project into more manageable chunks, I think. Um, the web components can be done sort of one at a time. CK Editor is probably the biggest one, the one that would have the biggest um, splash because it's available throughout Sakai. But there's other components that might be quite useful um, that could be plugged into both lessons and other places in Sakai where it would be um, beneficial. So uh, we can get that library of, of, of uh, functionality, a little 
nuggets of functionality all ready to go so that when we put it all together into this new elegant um, UI design, everything's already there and working behind the scenes. Um, so that's just kind of the, probably the most significant change as a result of some of the feedback. So you'll also see some changes here in the timeline. Um, we've kind of stretched it out a little bit. Um, the We had uh, initially with, um, I guess, maybe overly optimistic eyes had hoped to, to start some of the back end stuff in December. That didn't happen, but that's okay. Um, so we're hoping to start the back end development in February after, you know, we get Sakai 19 out, um, you know, maybe start on some of those CK editor upgrades and, and other web components as they come up at that point. And, um, and make sure that all of that stuff is really in the works um, over the few, you know, the summer months into code freeze, which usually happens in, in the fall. Um, and then also in March, start that design work. Um, you know, figure out who we're gonna bring in to be our UI expert, um, you know, work with them, work with the community to see uh, what's the best UI that we can build and, um, and really kind of refine that, user test it throughout the year, make sure that it's something that, that people are going to um, really buy into. Um, and then at the same time, um, we're going into uh, the development cycle for Sakai 20. So we would want to get a very minimum CK editor upgrade, potentially some other web components. And I don't have a, an itemized list at this point because I'm not sure which ones are on the table. Um, that would be decided a little bit later, but definitely the CK editor upgrade, which includes a lot of the stuff like drag and drop and inline editing and um, a lot of functionality there. Um, that would be included in Sakai 20. Um, and then uh, the UI work would begin the, the, the hard, you know, the, the actual uh, heads down development work would begin in January of next year um, with the idea to have it into core by, you know, late um, August, September, whenever code freeze for 21 happens, and that the new lessons UI would roll out in 2020 as part of, um, or late 2020, early 2021, as part of Sakai 21. So that those are the changes to the overall timeline. Hopefully that's a little more realistic of a timeline, gives us a little more time to um, to kind of build it out and, um, and work on it in, in bite-sized pieces. So um, so that's uh, what I have for you guys. If you are interested in, in looking at some of the notes um, in Appendix B down here, you'll see there's a couple of new uh, documents here. There's the community feedback notes, and then there's a concept map, which is basically um, just kind of a visualization of some of the, the stuff from the notes put into a concept map. Um, so it's not brand new content. It's just sort of a different way of, of organizing the content. Um, but these two documents um, should be available for everybody to view. Let me know if you have any trouble getting to those links. Um, so those are the, the detailed notes from all those um, various meetings and sessions that we had related to Lessons 2.0. So um, comments, questions? We're seeing some comments and questions in the chat right now, Wilma, and uh, most importantly, our thanks to you for your great work on organizing this, um, all the feedback and summarizing the project planning and timeline and everything. This is great detail for all of us. And, um, you know, it really exemplifies best practices for um, starting and working on new features in Sakai. So thank you to you and to Longsight for all your work on this. Well, thank you. Uh, um, it's yeah. exciting. To, to have people, you know, contribute and, and provide the feedback. So, you know, we're, we're happy to, to, to work with, um, you know, an excited and, and engaged community. So um, kudos to you guys, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Josh, is there anything that you'd like to add um, as far as, like, the project goes? Anything we, I didn't cover? 
Nope, that was that was terrific. I threw in a couple of uh, thoughts of my own in the chat, so people have seen those already. Um, no, I think this I think this is great. I think uh, this this two phase approach makes a lot of sense and also helps us better support the UI improvements you know that that need to be made so that those can be also a priority in uh, in 2019 for release in 2020. Yeah. Uh, and Tiffany has a question about uh, the CK editor upgrade, and is there any uh, discussion so far on whether or not Elfinder would continue to be the file picker, or would that be replaced? Anybody know at this point? I don't know about that one. Um, I would have to ask RL or, or one of the developers yeah. to see. Okay. I'm not sure if that's something that would tie in with CK Editor or not. Right, it is a separate thing, for sure. So, I mean, my my, my sense is that that's that's a great thing to take away, and let's you know let's let's try and define the CK Editor project to get as much bang for buck as possible. Yeah, that's awesome. Other questions? Let's, let's see. Laura suggests that we can uh, post our comments, or or is asking, can we link off of um, the Farm Dash Thirty Nine Jira? Let me look at that one real quick. My sense is yes, but let me just open it up and see. Yes, um, we. Uh, I need to actually, uh, thanks for posting that, Laura. I need to update the, um, this links to the first version of the document. I actually made a copy of it just to kind of preserve the first one, even though it's in the Google document history. I just thought it'd be easier to have two versions. So I'll update that link to the second draft. Um, but yes, if you have any comments, um, anything that you'd like to make sure, you know, we keep in mind or any, you know, must have features that are super important to your institution, you know, please feel free to comment on this JIRA um, and we'll kind of keep that as sort of a, a collection place for all of those thoughts and, and ideas related to the overall project. Wonderful. Very exciting. Other questions? Wilma, I mean, you've summarized this all so well, and I think we've been participating in many of the feedback sessions. So I think we're all relatively familiar with um, the concepts and, and the uh, desired improvements. But of course, um, as as things move, as development moves forward, forward, we'll have. I assume we'll have other opportunities um, to see progress and provide input on that. Yeah, absolutely. And what we'll probably do is, as we um, begin working on the various components, we'll be creating Jira's for those and linking them to to this Jira so that you can see them as as related items. Um, but uh, there'll be, you know, kind of a series of those. And, and particularly also when we get into the design work on the new UI, um, we're going to probably need uh, people to test. Uh, so we'll want to yeah. do some, some good UX testing and kind of run it by, um, you know, faculty. And so we might be, you know, putting out calls for people to do some testing locally and bring the results back. So there'll be lots and lots of opportunities like that throughout the pro process um, to uh, to contribute and, and make sure that your voice is heard. Awesome. And I noticed Josh um, commented that he would like to see document preview capabilities as part of the CK Editor upgrade, and I think that would be yeah, that plus. would be huge. We would really like to get that going. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and yeah. this is this is my wish at this point. It's not anything more than that, but it's right. a really strong wish. Um, oh, absolutely. So, can I ask a process question and a, a, ask for a little bit of additional feedback? So, the the plan that we followed for lessons and also that we followed for the the roadmap conversations uh, was to introduce the concepts at the Sakai Virtual Conference and then make the rounds of various community groups asking for feedback along the way and then eventually pulling that together so that the, 
the roadmap feedback will be reported out at Sakai Camp. I, I'm just curious for these two projects. I mean, they, we, we took a similar approach to gathering feedback. I, I would love to get your feedback on the feedback gathering approach. You know, what, what worked, what, uh, what, what, what maybe could have been improved? What are your thoughts? Well, uh, I will go ahead and chime in um, as others are thinking. Uh, but for me, I think this process, especially the lessons review and the roadmap um, conversations are absolutely the right way to go um, when introducing a big change uh, to existing features. And, um, you know, I think, I think you all have invited and provided many good opportunities to gather feedback and to share um, what the plan is or what the proposed plans are. And um, it's vitally important that this process be how we go about, you know, asking for feedback, you know, proposing ideas and asking for feedback and then updating um, as uh, you know, reasonably often. So I think you guys have done great personally. And thank you. Anybody else have any thoughts for Josh and Wilma? I pretty much agree with everything Tricia just said, actually. She kind of said it all. Um, I agree that that providing lots of, of opportunities in different venues for for collecting the feedback has been great, even though I kind of ended up having to listen to it more than once, but that's fine. Um, that wasn't meant to be a complaint. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, th thanks to all that, that have been involved. <clears throat> Better to, to be overly informed than to go, hey, what happened? There's there's some big change here and I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> I can't think of any um, process improvements at the moment, Josh. It seems like we're mostly in agreement that, that it's gone really well and it, it's the right way to go. Well, thank you guys for the, for the feedback. I mean, I think, you know, Process improvements would also be great, and I would say if if anyone sleeps on this question and comes back and says, you know, there's this thing, I really wish, you know, please get in touch with either Wilma or me and and surface that because you know, I think there are always opportunities to improve processes like this. Sure, sure, and it's so great that you guys are so open and inviting uh, that kind of feedback, and um, it's a it's a really uh, it's proof positive of our wonderful community and our collaborative spirit. So, love it. Jolie says, this is good for all of us who want to start new projects in the community and get feedback. So yeah, exactly, Jolie. And I know you and Sean have also done a stellar job of soliciting feedback and sharing um, information with the SWITCH project. So. I think, you know, I think we've, we're doing good things in, in the right ways. Adam Hauerwas has a comment here just that he just told an instructor to use Turnitin as a workaround for submission preview in the browser and would love that for that to exist in Sakai. So I guess you're speaking in terms, Adam, of the document preview possibility. Is that right? Yeah, right, 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 good, okay, absolutely. All right, what other comments or questions or um, other, other things that folks wanna talk about? while we're together. All right, well, I'm going to let you know that on February 6th, that will be the week after Sakai Camp, 
my hope is that um, those of us who attended will be able to give you an update on some of the outcomes from from the Sakai Camp meeting. Uh, but on February 20th, we have an open slot for topics. Um, so possibly, uh, if there is anything that you saw at the Sakai Virtual Conference that you think would be a good topic for us in an upcoming meeting, I would love to know about that. And I can reach out to that presenter and ask if they would be willing to join us. So uh, be thinking about that. And Josh has just pasted in the chat that he's curious if this group has ideas for additional topics to go on the list for Sakai Camp. And he pasted the link in there. Uh, so if you want to go look at that and um, add topics, um, please do. And we'll also give you a nice uh, preview of possible topics for that. Well, we had a great turnout today. Thank you guys so much. Um, if you haven't had a chance to sign into the Etherpad, I think most of you have, but not everyone. I'm going to paste that link. Whoops, I pasted the wrong link. Sorry. It was not the right link. Let's go ahead and do that. And um, otherwise, I think we can be adjourned. Thanks, Trisha. Thanks, everybody.